What's up guys? My name is Brennan with Trail 4 Runner and TrailTacoma.com and today I'm super hyped to show you guys the top six changes on the brand new Go Fast Camper version 2. These are the top six changes that they made from their first camper to their new camper. So first they had version 1, now they have version 2 and it's six times better, I guess. Yo, what's up guys? Before we get into the video, I just want to give you guys my background and my experience with GoFast as a company. So obviously this is a GoFast version 2 camper, second generation Tacoma. I love it so far, and I'm going to tell you guys obviously the top six changes that they've made on their version 2 camper. I ran a version 1 tent on my 4Runner for probably like three or four years, and I absolutely loved that product. But there were some shortcomings with it. For sure. So a lot of that is going to carry over from my experience with the version 1 tent to the version 2 camper. Obviously, it's the exact same tent on top, right? They were pretty much exactly the same version 1 to version 1 and version 2 to version 2. So what changed on the version 2 camper that's so flipping amazing? Well, I'm going to tell you guys right now. Wait, 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 wait. Back up a second. So you ran a rooftop tent and now you're reviewing the camper. Well, yeah. They're pretty much the same thing. So I just wanted to go over kind of like my background with the tent real quick and give you guys uh, just a general overview on the challenges that I found with the version one tent and then obviously how they addressed it and fixed it in their version two camper or tent, however you want to look at it, right? So my first challenge with the tent was the wind fairing or lack thereof, but GFC's solution to that was their platform wind skid. So the platform wind skid like by far was a must have for sure. Like if you didn't have that platform wind skid, it did whistle and it was annoying, but they fixed it with their platform wind skid. So that was number one. Number two were, was how the actual tent connected from the aluminum to the aluminum. They used buttons, they used button clasps on their first design. So those button clasps snapped into place. Over time, if you open the tent a bunch, those buttons fall off or they become loose, right? So it was a challenge at night when it was windy and super windy, right? The wind's coming in, hitting the side of the material super hard. Those buttons would rattle in the middle of the night. Clack, 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 clack. And you already know when you're camping, you're sleeping out in the middle of nowhere. You're obviously not at home on your like tempur mattress, right? With like a memory foam pillow and like sleeping like a baby. So, dude, it was annoying, right? Like those clack, 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 clack. It was annoying. But it was an easy fix because I'd just like throw a shirt next to the button clasp and it would stop rattling, right? So that was number two. Number three was their latch on the actual tent itself. So it closed using this uh, like slide mechanism that locked it into place. Like you lifted a latch, you'd slide it out and you slide it back in and lock it. The challenge with that, it was so finicky and basically there was a hole and the latch slid through the hole, right? So the hole sat on the outside and this pin slid through to keep the actual tent latched into place. And then you rotated it down, slid it out, and then lifted up the tent. The problem with that is if you didn't have all the material tucked in on the sides and from the back, then that latch would kind of collide with the top and it wouldn't slide in. So you'd have to be super specific about all the material being center aligned from the back, from the sides, everything being completely perfect all the way through so that tent would shut perfectly. Even then, it's such a low profile tent, which is obviously one of the selling points. Sometimes it would still just collide. So I'd have to literally lean on top of the tent, put my whole body weight on top. Sometimes I'd have to like literally lay on top of the tent and slide to get that slide to go through its hole. So that was number three. Number four was the struts on the outside of the tent. So the struts on the previous version, on the version one tent, had the struts on the outside and there were a handful of trails that I went through that were super tight, super narrow, and that's like all of our trails out here in Northern California. They're all super tight, narrow trails with lots of pine trees, redwoods, brush, manzanita, everything, right? And Dude, we had to go through some sketchy tight trails and those branches were hitting the tent all over the place. So 
a couple times some branches broke off in between the struts and the actual side of the tent. So not a huge deal breaker, but sometimes I was like, damn, I wonder when, I wonder when those things are going to break. So that's number four. And that's kind of like it for the tent. Those, those are the only problems that I've ever had with the tent. And again, none of those are really deal breakers, but it's something to look at going into version two, right? So those are the only problems I have with the tent. Didn't run a version one camper, but I'm going to show you guys on my Tacoma how they addressed all those issues or challenges and then what they did differently, obviously, in their camper itself. Okay, with all that said about my experience with the GoFast tent, I loved that product. Even though there were some challenges, no product in this industry is perfect. And if you've been in this industry for any amount of time, everybody picks everything apart, right? Everybody has something to say about everything and people complain, well, this button doesn't feel good when I press it or the, the screws didn't align really good and it didn't come in a baggie with a popsicle like other companies do, right? Like everybody complains about everything and at the end of the day, GoFast is about as close to perfect as a company gets. I've ran probably five rooftop tents on my fifth gen 4Runners. Dude, nothing compares to GoFast. <clears throat> nothing. And I will proudly say that. So that, uh, that rooftop tent that I ran, their version one rooftop tent, it was sick. I mean, I loved, I loved it compared to literally every other tent I've run. So even though I had some challenges, I just wanted to kind of preface that with saying even though I just said those things about their tent, I still loved it and is the reason why I'm running their version two camper, which is clearly so, so sick. So let's finally get into the top six reasons or six things that GoFast changed on their version two camper versus their version one. Let's go. Number one, the number one thing that GoFast changed on the V2 is this guy right here, their hinge on the panels. So the hinge on the previous panels had some challenges as well, but GoFast as a company, a stand-up company they are, a bunch of hipsters got around the fireplace, they're drinking some dank IPAs, they all have big scruffy beards, but well-maintained, I'm sure. And they said, you know what? People are having problems with the hinge, let's just replace them all. And then another one said, damn, Carl, that, that's a good idea. So that's what they did. If you had a problem with the hinge on the version one camper, you could take it to GFC and they'd replace it for you on the spot. Pretty sick. So the version two camper has this updated hinge. It's all completely redesigned after years of experience of like testing it, you know, through Baja, everything, right? Like seeing their previous versions. So that's number one. They updated the hinge and it's sick for sure. It works. It just flat out works. It's stout. So that is number one. Number two, the second thing GoFast changed on the version two tent is none other than whoa, the space frame. The space frame is, let's call it like the meat and potatoes of a GoFast. It's what the whole design is based off of. The space frame is amazing. It's the reason why GoFast Camper is so freaking sick. The version one space frame was all connected by aluminum bars all welded together all the way around, right? So from a production perspective, it took a long time to weld all those bars together and you would need a seasoned welder on staff all the time welding all these aluminum bars together. So that was really like the main pain point for GoFast as a company were people welding together the space frame. That's why their lead times were like 12 months because it took forever to weld together a space frame. So it was cool. It was the reason why Go Fast grew and it was a great starting point, but they needed to redesign the version one space frame. So the version two space frame is all connected by these aluminum bars and aluminum brackets and this half seat channel all the way around, right? It's all brackets, it's all pieces, everything's cut, machined, CNC designed in Bozeman. It's all made in the USA. And all these little parts and pieces come out on like one of their install carts. They push out an install cart, it's got all the pieces on it, and some dude just sits there with his headphones and knocks the whole thing out, right? Pretty much any able body person that's able to turn a wrench can put this thing together, which is massive. So let me put something into perspective. GoFast was producing about a camper per day 
one camper for every single day. That's crazy. That's why their lead times were so long. They weren't producing fast enough, right? Not to keep up with the demand that people wanted. A lot of people want to go fast camper, so they had to make them faster. So they redesigned it. This is what it is now. It's pretty amazing, and I'm sure of it. A bunch of hipsters were sitting around the campfire, and they were like, we need to make it lighter and stronger and faster. That's what they did. They made it lighter and stronger and faster. Now, their lead times are not 12 months. Their lead times are eight to 10 weeks. They went from producing a camper per day to like eight or 10 per day. That's massive. So that's change number two, the space frame. Pretty impressive. Number three, the struts. The struts are now on the inside of the tent, which is huge. I don't need to go into much detail on that, but I'm sure Carl, hipster that he is, was like, you know what? That strut, I don't like where it's at. I want it on the inside. And everybody was like, Poof. mind blown. So now it's on the inside. The struts can support 100 pounds on the roof and 600 pounds when it's static. So when the tent's closed, it can hold 600 pounds. If you wanna throw anything on top of the tent, lumber, steel, whatever, a boat, you can. It can hold 600 pounds. They have beef rack crossbars, which go on the top, which is basically like a you know cross rail system. You can mount whatever you want up there. Pretty impressive. Struts on the inside. Now out of the way of dust, debris, branches, particulates, whatever you want to say, they are protected. That is change number three. That's change number three. Well done, GFC. Number four. We have the platform wind skid, or lack thereof. The platform wind skid is now integrated into the design in the front, which is a big change for me because, again, I ran the version one tent and I had to run the camper with that, or the tent without the platform wind skid, and it was loud. It made noise. I didn't like the noise. So I had to get their platform wind skid, which fixed the issue, but now it's integrated into the design here. I know mine is lacking some cool GFC stickers, but I might get some cool stickers. I might do some topo designs, which might make me a massive overlander, which is the look I'm going for. If you don't have topo, do you overland? I don't think so. So maybe some topo, maybe some, maybe some camo would be kind of cool. Maybe a fat Toyota decal right there. Anyway, it opens up the opportunity for a lot of options now that it's integrated into the design. So that's number four. No more wind skid. It's integrated. Number five is the fabric cord. So remember I was telling you guys on the V1 how the fabric was being held to the aluminum extrusion with buttons? So on the inside of the outside aluminum extrusion, there was a button and that was a male end button. And on the fabric was a female button and they would snap together. About every five inches, there was a button clasp and that's what connected the fabric to the aluminum extrusion. And again, over time, they rattled, they come loose. But this design is a plastic cable that runs in between the exterior aluminum extrusion and there's an interior aluminum extrusion now that holds the fabric together. And in between both extrusions is that cable and the fabric wraps around that cable in there and then it's sandwiched together. So there's a lot of copycat dudes that are out there making GFCs and they use that button design because it was what GFC came up with first, but that's not gonna work forever. Obviously GFC completely redesigned it and it's taken a lot more material on the inside to sandwich the fabric in between the aluminum extrusions. So dude, this is a game changer. You try to pull this fabric up, you wiggle it when the tent pops up super fast and it tightens everything together that's what kind of pulled on those buttons on the V1 was the material kind of pulling against itself when the pop top would go all the way up. So now that there is that plastic cable rod wrapped around the material and sandwiched between two aluminum extrusions, bro, game over. This is the answer. So sick, that's number five. Number six is the latch. This is the game game changer right here so the new latch you just pull out on this knob out here and it pulls back this pin and then the new latches latch right into place and i'll show you how that works but i just wanted to show you the inside 
of the latch. All right, so now that you guys have seen the inside of the latch, this is the outside. You have this knob that you pull on right there, and that pulls that pin out. And then once the latch is down, you just let go of it. So this is design number six that they changed, and it's real sick. So first, obviously, pulling all your material, both sides. And the old one, I shit you not, I used to have to jump on the tent, I jump up there. I can't jump right now because I'm on the tailgate. If I could jump that high, maybe I'd have a different, maybe I'd have a different career. You know, maybe I'd play in the NBA or something, but that would probably never be realistic because I'm only like 5'9". So scratch that idea. So anyway, I'd have to put a ton of pressure on the old tent in order to get that knob to slide through. Remember I was telling you that, about that earlier? That's what I had to do. I'd have to put a ton of pressure on it, and then I'd have to slide that pin through. It took a lot of pressure. I'd have to jump on top and really push the tent down to get it to lock. This design, this latch right here, wow. Wow, look at this. I got a shoulder up there. No weight at all. Press that. Boom. Done. Locked. Game over. So good. I don't know how many hipsters it took to create that. But damn. It's so good. It works so well. So the reason why I'm so hyped on this is because I ran their version 1 tent. I saw everything it had. I ran it for like three years. I love the product, but the version two, dude, they fixed literally everything. Everything that I had challenges with before has been addressed, is stronger, lighter, faster, easier. Everything's just incredibly made, incredibly well designed. The engineering that went into it, I think they have like 40 engineers or something on their payroll. I can't even imagine what that payroll costs, but which is probably why these things cost as much as they do. They have a ton of R&D that they're constantly doing on their products and it clearly shows. So, yeah, so what's next? Uh, white glove delivery. I touched on it a little bit, but GFC is now delivering their campers to the top 48 and will install these on your truck in your driveway. They will drive it from Bozeman to your house in New Mexico to your house in LA. We know there's a bunch of overlanders in LA and San Diego. They go there for sure. So yeah, I hope you guys liked the video. I just wanted to give you guys kind of an overview on the top six changes that GFC made to the version two camper. I haven't decked this thing out yet. I still need to hook up my reverse light, brake light, and, um, and just a ton of other stuff. They have a ton of accessories, obviously, with their, uh, their channel slot right here, this little T-slot that you can get. They got beef rack crossbars, they got awning brackets, they got light brackets, they got basically anything you could possibly imagine for mounting gear, max track shovels, high lifts, whatever you want to mount, they got it all. So <clears throat> they have learned so much over the last, I would say decade or something, they've been in the game. Clearly the pioneers in the camper world, it's, you know, it's not gonna be like an Alucab or something where it's like, you know, it's got a stove and a fire pit and a freaking sauna. You know, it doesn't have all that, but it's not made to be that. It's made to go fast. It's made to fit your truck incredibly well. And it's made to do everything that you do on a daily basis and daily drive with it. So once I get the beef rack crossbars, I'll be able to put everything in here. But even with the camper on the top, I've been able to fit three paddle boards in here. Any lumber run that I do, the lumber, you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, you know, it just like sticks out the back. So anything that I do on a daily basis, the go fast has not prohibited me or challenged me in any way from doing what I do on a daily basis with my truck. So I'm super, super hyped on this camper. I can't wait to go use it more. I've already camped in it once. We went out to a trail out in, uh, off 395, I'd tell you the name, but then I'd be geotagging on uh, YouTube and that would be against Overland protocol. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, in any case, if you guys have any questions on the camper in general, if you have any questions for me about the truck or anything, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you guys. But for now, those are the top six changes that GFC has made on their new camper versus their version one camper. I hope you guys liked it. Enjoy. I'll see you on the trails. Peace. All right, guys, right now I'm going to show you how to set up the GFC and then break it down. We'll see how long it takes. 
from just popping and then closing. Pull the pins. And that's it, time. Now, we'll break it down. One, two, three, go. you have everything out of the way. Boom. And my LaCroix in the way. I think I got a little bit more material. Need to suck in there. If that dang LaCroix wasn't in the way. Time. And that is the Go Fast V2. Get set. Sometimes you have to walk around, get that guy. So there are a lot of similarities in the version one tent and the version two camper. You ever just daydream in the middle of a video and wonder? What you were gonna say? I do that shit all the time. But LaCroix always helps set me straight. Thanks, LaCroix.